Hey guys, and welcome to my beginner's guide to monkey type. In this video, I'll be covering the basics of monkey type, briefly explain the leaderboard and profile pages, and then I'll get to the main part of the video, which will walk through all of the settings on the website. If you've used monkey type before and want to skip straight to the settings page, you can go to this timestamp. Anyways, I hope this guide helps you and enjoy. When you open the site, the first thing you'll see is the typing test itself, and all you need to do to begin the test is to start typing. When you finish the test, you'll see all of your stats as well as all of the details about the test. If you don't know already, raw speed is how fast you typed without adjusting for accuracy, and consistency measures how much your raw speed deviated from its average throughout the test. The results screen also features several buttons down here, which allow you to do various things. These two are for either going to a new test or repeating the same test again. This button lets you practice words that you type slowly, incorrectly, or both. The words history button shows what words you typed and all of the mistakes you made. This button lets you watch a replay of the test. And this one will save a screenshot of your result. You can also quickly restart a test at any time by pressing tab then enter. The main selling point of monkey type is that you can customize the test in many different ways, and the most obvious way of doing that is the settings bar above the test. The two buttons on the left let you add punctuation and numbers, which you might want to turn on if you want a more comprehensive typing test. In the middle section you can find all of the main modes that monkey type has, and the last section contains the settings for each mode. For example, the default mode is time, and on the right side you can choose the amount of time you want, or you can click this icon to type in a custom amount. For very long or infinite length tests, you can hit escape to pull up the monkey type console, which is basically a quick way to search for any setting on the website, and then you can search for bail out and hit enter, which will end the test early. Words mode works similarly to time, except you choose a number of words to type instead of a length of time. On quote mode, you can choose the length of quote you want to type, or you can have a mix of all of them. You can also search in favorite quotes and click the heart icon to type only your favorited quotes. In Zen mode, you can type whatever you want with no guidelines. Just start typing and then hit shift plus enter when you're done to see the results. In custom mode, you can hit the change button and create a custom test with whatever text you want. You can also create some more advanced custom tests in this menu, but I go into more detail about that in this video if you want to learn about that. Another important part of the typing page is the language button, where you can select the word list that the test is generated from. This includes not only other languages, but also more difficult versions of English, such as English 10K, which includes the top 10,000 English words instead of the default top 200. That's basically everything you need to know about the typing page of monkey type, so let's move on to the other pages. The most important page on monkey type is probably the settings page, but before I get to that, I want to briefly show you the other pages. If you open the leaderboard, you can see the top scores of all time and for the current day. At the bottom, you can see your own ranking and percentile. On the information page, you can find some helpful information for new users, and you can see all of the people who have contributed to and supported the website. On the profile page, you can view your stats and your most recent tests. There are lots of filters you can use to sort through your tests, and in just a minute I'll show you how you can create tags which you can use to organize your tests to filter through them even more. If you want to share your profile with somebody else, you can click this button here to copy the link to your public profile. Alright, so now we're really going to get into the meat of the video because we're going to move on to the settings page. I'm not going to show you every setting that monkey type has, but I'm going to show you all of the most important ones, and you should be able to do pretty much anything you want to do with the website using that information. First off are the account settings. If you link your Discord account and join the monkey type server, then you'll get a Discord role based on your speed. It's important to know that your role is based on your 60 seconds personal best, even though the default test on the website is 30 seconds. You should also join the Discord server before you link your account, because otherwise you won't get your speed roll until you get a new personal best or have a mod manually update your rolls. Next are the previously mentioned tags, which you can use to create and apply to tests to help organize them. The main purpose of this is to tag tests, and then when you're looking at the stats on your profile, you can filter by tag in order to specifically look at tests that either have or don't have that tag. You can create a tag by hitting this plus button, and you can enable it by clicking it from the list. You can also add a tag to a test after you've completed the test from the profile page. Presets are a powerful feature which allow you to save your current settings and apply them later, 
which is very efficient since you can change as many settings as you want at the same time by just selecting a preset. Next to the behavior settings, which change the functionality of the typing test itself. Text difficulty will require you to be more strict with your accuracy. Expert difficulty requires you to fix mistakes before you press space and move on to the next word, and master difficulty requires you to make no mistakes at all. If you don't meet these requirements, the test will instantly end, you'll be taken to the results screen, and the score won't be saved. On the other hand, you can turn on blind mode, which will hide all of your mistakes from you, which can help you focus on speed without worrying too much about your accuracy. Also in the behavior settings, you can select what language you want to type, just like you can from the home page. Below that are the fun boxes. Fun boxes are special modes which largely change how monkey type either looks or functions. Some of them are more useful than others, but I recommend looking through all of them because they're just fun. Input settings change the way that monkey type handles your input. Freedom mode is a setting that I always keep turned on, which allows you to backspace even if the previous word was correct. Enabling the strict space setting will allow you to press space even if you haven't typed any letters of the current word. Otherwise, you aren't able to continue until you've typed at least one letter. Stop on error is a very useful setting which forces you to correct your mistakes. When you set it to letter mode, you won't be able to continue typing until you've hit the correct key and when you set it to word mode, you won't be able to move to the next word until you've corrected any typos. When confidence mode is turned on, you aren't able to go back to previous words to correct your mistakes. If you set it to max, you won't be able to backspace at all. The indicate typo setting will make it so that you can see what mistakes you've made either below or in place of the correct character. Lazy mode will remove all of the accents from letters, which can be helpful if you're trying to type another language and you don't want to worry about the diacritics. The layout emulator option on the site allows you to use virtually any keyboard layout even if you don't have it installed on the computer you're using, which can be very helpful especially if you want to practice while you're at work or school. Next are the sound settings which are pretty simple. You can just select a sound that'll be played every time you type a key, and you can make it so that an error noise is played whenever you make a mistake. This is a pretty small feature of the site but it can be nice to have. The caret settings affect the typing caret, and there are a few settings here that you might want to look at. The smooth caret setting allows you to either turn off or change the speed of the smooth gliding of the cursor. Caret style changes the look of the caret if you prefer not to just have the straight line. The pace caret is a ghost caret which you can use in order to pace yourself at a specific speed while you're typing. It will appear in addition to the normal caret, and you can set it to match your speed using either your average, personal best, previous test, or your best score in the last 24 hours. Pace Carrot also has a more hidden function, which is that on the typing test page, the personal best and daily settings can be used to see your personal best or best score of the day from the typing page. Normally, you would have to go to the results screen or a different page on the site to see this. If you want to have that, but you don't actually want the Pace Carrot, then you can set the Pace Carrot style to off and it will become invisible. Appearance settings are some of the most important on monkey type because they're the main way that you customize how the site looks. Timers slash progress style allows you to choose between three different styles for the timer. The bar mode adds a bar to the top of the screen, the text mode will add a large text timer, and the mini mode is like the text timer except it's smaller. The highlight mode setting allows you to have the letters, current word, or nothing highlighted as you type. With tape mode, the test will turn into a single line that will move as you type. Show all lines is a pretty self-explanatory setting, and it can be really nice if you want to be able to see a whole quote or a custom text at once. Show decimal places is also pretty self-explanatory, and it's a setting that I like to have on at all times so that I can see my stats more precisely. The font size and font family settings let you change the font and size of the text on the site. Changing the font family will change the fonts all over the website, but font size will only affect the typing test itself. If you want to increase or decrease the font size of the whole page, then I recommend just zooming in on your browser. You can use the page width setting to change the width of the content on the site, which can be nice if you want the test to take up more or less of the page. The key map is a major feature which allows you to add a virtual keyboard to the site. You can't use the key map to actually type, but you can set it to react mode to display all of the keys you're pressing and it makes a screen recording of your test much more interesting to watch. You can also set it to static, which will just make it a static image, and you can change it to next to highlight the next key you need to press, which is helpful if you're learning a new layout. Speaking of which, you can change what layout the key map displays using the key map layout setting. Next up are the theme settings, which are also equally as important for customizing the look of the site. The main setting here is the themes themselves, and there are lots of them, so feel free to look through them and see which ones you like the most. There's also the custom background feature, which lets you add a custom background image to monkey type. After you've added a custom background, you're able to 
modify it with filters so that you can make the test more visible. The next section of the settings is called Hide Elements, and it allows you to add or remove several things from the page. If you turn on Live Words for a minute, you'll be able to see your current speed at all times during the test, and Live Accuracy works very similarly. Live Burst can also be turned on, which will show the speed that you typed the previous word. Also under Hide Elements, you can choose to show or hide the timer, which is very helpful if you tend to choke when you know the test is about to end. Finally, there's the Show Average setting, which will show your average speed, accuracy, or both for the last 10 tests that you've completed with the current settings. And finally, the last section of the settings is called the Danger Zone. Most of these settings change something about your account, and many of them cannot be undone, so be careful not to accidentally reset anything that you don't want to. With that said, there are some useful features, such as being able to change your account name, update your email or password, reset your settings to the default, and enable or disable advertisements. There's another helpful feature located in the Danger Zone, which is that you can either import or export settings, which lets you easily share your settings with anyone else. But that's about all the information I have, so I hope this guide taught you something and serves as a useful reference, and thanks for watching.